Hello, and welcome back to DevNet Create. We have an exciting session here for you today, featuring two of our DevNet specialized partners based in Stockholm, Sweden. In this session, we're going to talk about the types of engagements and the type of projects that our DevNet specialized partners are delivering to their customers, and also a special twist of talking about how, do, how two DevNet specialized partners are working together to help solve customer challenges and deliver new solutions to the market. In this session, we'll, we'll feature Two individuals. Uh, we'll start with our first DevNet specialized partner in the world, a company called Miradot, and their representative, Marcus. Marcus, do you mind introducing yourself to our audience here, please? Hey, Chuck, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm Marcus Lind, uh, co-founder and CEO of Miradot. Uh, Miradot started out as a consultancy company about six years ago. Uh, we started then moving into being an integrator and and then reseller as well. Uh, since the last two years, we focus heavily on automation. Uh, we're still quite small, 10 people, uh, yet we are Sweden's seventh largest partner with Cisco today. Um, and I'd like to say where other partners works end, our begins. That's great. Thank you for that description of, of Meridot, Marcus. And our second guest is from a, another company in Stockholm, a company called SDNIT. And what's special about SDNIT is they are unique in that they are a non-reseller partner that is part of our DevNet specialization program. And here to talk about that is Stefan. Stefan, do you mind introducing yourself to our audience, please? Thanks, Chuck. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Hedenström, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of SDNIT. SDNIT is a consultancy company within SecOps, DevOps, NetOps, and IT management. Uh, SDNIT is a, a Cisco uh, DevNet competence partner within software. Uh, so we are not a reseller. Uh, we can support partners and end customers with our expertise and our skills. That, that's that's great, Stefan. And can we talk a little bit about how you are using your DevNet skills and your, and your inherent software skills as a developer to expand your business into more of a Cisco ecosystem? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, uh, this training program that we have attended is a, is a very vast program, including a lot of different type of skill sets and what we've learned through this journey is a lot about different uh, technologies in depth but also a lot about uh, uh, new use cases and 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 source of uh, um, source of uh, inspiration so uh, we what we found out through this program is is really how you can use the devnet skills in in a, in a broader perspective and so we we are today working with more and and different types of of uh, customer cases today that we have uh, done before uh, and that's the outcome of of this that's excellent. So you, you're using uh, resources such as our DevNet Code Exchange and some of our learning labs and sandboxes to be able to get access and to understand how to apply your skills to to, to customer challenges that you didn't you were not necessarily aware of before going through that process. So I think that's a great example of how a traditional software company can leverage the resources of Cisco DevNet to be able to to address new markets. So, Marcus, you as a as a traditional reseller partner, can you talk a little bit about how you are leveraging your software skills and the DevNet skills that you have to expand the type of business and to evolve into uh, new customer conversations uh, based on those skills and capabilities? Uh, I love to talk about that, Chuck. Um, so our customers heavily invest in new platforms. They pick up programmability support as a requirement without having a clear path on how to utilize them. 
we want to fill that vacuum, lead the customer to higher efficiency and get the tooling in place. Um, as we see it, hardware is the foundation. If it gives the capability to host a service or an app, APIs enables the hardware to be used pro programmatically. Mirror provides the wisdom and intelligence which enables you to use those APIs. Um, that was the vision a couple of years back. We have that in place. We have gained the experience. We have the references. The vision now is to continue to be the best at what we do so that we can also become the biggest, always by exceeding what we thought we could accomplish with what we had. I, I love that aspirational goal of, of building on these skills and working to kind of increase your market share and increase your standing in the market. As you're delivering this, and I'll, I'll open this up to both of you to, to, for us to dialogue through, how are you addressing new buying centers or, or new, whether it's line of business or opening it up into different technology uh, areas based on your software skills? How is this helping you have those conversations with your customers today? From our perspective um, as a reseller uh, or former reseller, I don't know what the future holds here, uh, but we have always been tied to uh, talking to the customer in the in the right moment regards to life cycle of hardware uh, or which vendor they they have today in their network or infrastructure uh, that doesn't apply when you talk about automation anymore um, and we are not being limited to talking to only one department or one team in certain areas for example network or or a server or storage or uh, what it could be but we can have the conversation to uh, multiple groups or multiple teams within their organization because uh, automation comes to life when you expand it outside the uh, one single team. And Stefan, from your side of coming from more of the software angle, is this enabling you or can you talk about how this is enabling you to both talk to your your line of business customers but also interfacing that to to it types of scenarios yes of course jack i can um in 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 our view working with with uh, with customers that that have a, a of a, um, a a broader interest of 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 services nowadays when when you move from uh, automation in specific silos uh, to automation when it comes to a broader perspective, meaning that that uh, it's not all about if you're talking about end to end automation, uh, you want to have all the different silos within one organization and you want to automate end to end. So that gives us opportunities to to speak uh, cross boundaries and also to collect uh, different parts of the organization into one single room for for a meeting and helping them combined so so the the knowledge of 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 uh, um, software development with 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 cisco um, targeting um, area is is given us also one part of this this uh, um, this um, solution and and together we we can can help the whole spectrum so it's it's really good for us knowing the details but also knowing the, the the overview perspective of it, so that's that's where we come in. And for us, it's it, it's giving us, as I said, more use cases, more more uh, inspiration of of of, uh, of sources, uh, and and through this worldwide inspiration of 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 of, uh, uh, of new type of use cases. Uh, we can bring that to the table. We can we can talk to our customers and and inspire them to to do more. Uh, that's that's what we gain from this. 
Excellent. And, and Stefan, as you talk about the idea of, of kind of bridging those various silos together that are coming from different perspectives and different technology backgrounds, I know one of the, the areas that you wish to adapt into this is leveraging training to your customers to help them understand the particulars of a given team and how that applies to the overall. Can you talk about how you're looking to have training delivery as a for programmability and automation as part of the, the, the differentiation that SDN it wants to provide to the market? Yes, uh, for when it comes to automation, one of the big challenges is actually uh, the skill set today uh, and combining training and consultancy services makes customers being able to be self-sufficient in the end and 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 that's that's our goal to really help the customers being able to to handle their automation journey in the end by themselves and and we as a company should be seen as somebody that can can boost and 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 promote and help them in a starting point or uh, when they feel like the journey is 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 not going at the tempo they 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 uh, the pace that they want to have, uh, so uh, for us, I mean, training and consultancy services is, is really helping the customers being able to be self sufficient in the end. That, that's great. And, and I know, Marcus, from your perspective at Miradot, I know one of the things you're talking about is the ability to hand over the types of projects that you're delivering to customers so you can move on to, to other areas with them and help them expand in other areas. Can you talk about how you're looking to leverage training capabilities as part of the deliverable for the solution you're, you're presenting to the customers? Uh, yes, of course, and that ha that's heavily aligned with uh, with what Stefan said. Um, we always aim for our customers to be self-sustaining after a finished project. Uh, we do not have the people, we do not have the offering or even the ambition to be a part of the daily operations of the automation that we deliver and build. Um, we are a part of evolving the software. We support our customers when they are uh, changing the, the requirements or doing large uh, large changes in in their infrastructure um, or tooling for for that matter but training and building the competence within the customer organization is key for them to use to continue to use and modify and develop uh, whatever we we deliver to them uh, and it's it, it is key for us to be hired in next coming projects uh, and handing reference cases to new customers. So th that is key part of our delivery. I, I think that makes perfect sense for how both of you are looking to leverage both your software development skills and your consulting services and you know putting training around that so that the customer truly understands how to embrace and adopt the technologies that you're delivering. And, and I think that's a great support model that um, I, I think our partners are going to need to leverage to be successful in this space. Now, as we're talking about, you know, kind of, we're talking with two partners, you know, you're, you're a kilometer apart from your office, uh, from your office spaces. The go to market models that we can enable from a software perspective with, with uh, a partner like Miradot being a reseller that has programmable, programmability services and a partner like SDN it who focuses on programmability services. Can you talk about some of the, the the types of ways that you see yourselves working together? So, you know, Marcus, from your perspective, how do you see uh, th this go-to-market model working, where where you and Stefan can work together to solve customer challenges? Okay, uh, first off, the um, the competitors in this area in Sweden are nearly non-existent, and the customers that want this uh, competence is uh very non non non-existent uh so we see a high demand uh and the ones that have the most benefits from automation is the larger companies um and they are starting to heavily move into automation and and infrastructure as code as as the method 
we can certainly do quite much with the automation, but the projects are becoming larger than we can handle by ourselves. Um, and the people with the right talent in, in this area are, are very rare. Um, so if you have specialized in this area, we don't see much competition. It's make per perfectly se sense to just strengthen each other and uh, and be able to uh, do pr bigger projects than we could by ourselves. I, I, I like that a lot of being able to leverage the talents of of those with you to be able to tackle these together instead of trying to um, maybe go a bit beyond your uh, a bit beyond your talent base or your 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 capabilities to solve those challenges. Stefan, from your side, can you describe how you're looking at it from SDN's perspective of being able to leverage your skills and talents to, to help existing partners like Marcus, as well as things that you're bringing to the table that are specific that work very well in a, in a, uh, in a joint go-to-market uh, engagement? Yes, and I, I, I totally agree with Marcus. It's, uh, um, first of all, I mean, the the... The market is huge and the need is huge and there is not that much expertise and experience and I would say that joint forces with more experience is uh, is the way to go uh, and and uh, um, there is uh, there is a huge needs also of different skill sets and when talking about automation and specific end-to-end -end automation, it's, it's such a broad spectra that when it comes down to, to in the end, there, you need a lot of different skill sets within the engineers. And that's where I see we can, can, can combine and, and, and help each other to, to, to really move forward. And as, as Marcus said, it's mostly the large uh, customers are, are the ones that are, are targeting this need right now. We have a, a very strong anti-job protection mindset. We, we, we want to collaborate and that's, we think that's fun. We think that's the most interesting part of, of, of the consultancy area to do that. And, and, uh, so I, I, in general, we are always open for, for uh, collaboration. And, and we think that Miradot has a, uh, has a perfect uh, profile for us to, 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 to work together. We can uh, really, you know, excel by, by, uh, by joining forces. So, so that's what we want to achieve. And we want to... We want to go for the, you know, the big targets. We go, want to go for the, you know, the premium kind of automation stuff. So it feels also like we have the same, uh, you know, internal type of culture and, 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 and so on. And we, we have our office just a, a few blocks away. So, yeah, I think it's a really good, uh, nice starting point for us. That, that's great. And that, that spirit that you talk about of working together, that, that's really how we built DevNet as a community to you know, have the community members help each other. And you're showing how that works at a business level. And I think that's a great testament to the, the vision that we want to enable to have this, this robust developer community. Uh, Stefan, as we're coming to the end of the session here, you know, any quick comments or uh, advice or message you'd like to give to the audience? Yes, I, I would say, first of all, network automation is, is a game changer and automation end to end. That's that's a hallelujah moment. So I would strongly suggest everybody to embrace this new way of working. And it's a long process and you need to invest a lot of time into it. But in the end, it's a it, it's a fun ride. It's interesting, and I can promise that that everybody that will start with this journey will see also it's a kind of reawakening for for the for the networking industry. It's a it, it's a new thing, and it's different when you 
automate away all the manual tasks or all the maintenance tasks or all the not so fun tasks, then it's really, really rewarding. So I will strongly say that start competing and start doing this seriously and and just get started. I, I I love that the 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 automation awakening that uh, that the that the industry is moving towards. I think that's a that, that's a great tagline there, uh, Marcus. From your side, uh, what what would your closing thoughts and advice be to our audience here as we wrap this session? Well, I just have to say that in addition to what Stefan said, um, in order to get started around this, it usually starts getting an uh, RFI or RFP around. Uh, and to do that, we have seen a couple uh, started moving, uh, but it's it's a completely new area for both the co procurement team and the technical teams. So many of them simple, simply don't know how to write the, the desired outcomes, their technical requirements or the expectation of the uh, deliverables. So if you're in this stage, we have some experience. Uh, so if you get stuck, please reach out. Thank you, Chuck. All right, Marcus, Stefan, thank you so much for joining the session. I think we've given some some very valuable commentary to our to our DevNet community and to the audience here on how they can start this journey, both from a customer perspective as well as if you're a partner looking to get into this space. I think you've demonstrated that there's there's a lot of opportunity here, and I love the comments of you know let's take this serious and you know the automation awakening. I I, I think that one's going to stick. So. Uh, we'll continue to, to, to talk about that concept. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank our audience. And of course, again, thanking our, our special guests here, Marcus and Stefan. We, uh, we appreciate your time and attendance in this session, and we wish you a, a very happy and uh, enjoyable rest of the DevNet Create event. Thank you so much.